and it was just it's kind of like icing on the cake. I mean, it's just an extra specimen for us to look at. Do you think that's why it's higher than the others? Because it, if it was taken at the hospital, it didn't have as much chance to redistribute? Dr. Nippy knows. Uh, do you know? I, I don't necessarily like the phrase of the question. I mean, I can answer to what I think he's aiming for, but... Okay, if the question's vague, then... It's vague. We both agree. <laughs> Sustain. If you want to re-ask it, Ms. Flanagan, well, in, ter in terms of the area, go ahead. Ask it so that you would understand it, since you know what I'm, I'm looking for. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Okay. Oh. Does the... Well, I, <laughs> does, does the just a moment, time, please. Just a moment. Uh, we need I, to make sure we're on the same page. Okay. Can we turn up the lights, sir? You still want them down? I, I need the lights down. All right, down. Thank you. The hospital blood is harder is higher than the heart blood. Do you know why? No. The femoral blood is the lowest of them all. Do you know why? Well, what I just got done explaining about postmortem redistribution. So would that mean that there's more redistribution occurs in the femoral blood than it does in the other two bloods? Mm. Postmortem redistribution would affect the heart blood or the central cavity more so. How come it's higher than the femoral blood? Objection, if you know, it calls for speculation. If you know. I, I've kind of lost you. What's higher than the femoral blood? They're both higher than Why the Why is the blood. heart blood higher than the femoral blood in terms of propofol concentration? Overrule. You may have. Oh, thank you. Um, Probably due to postmortem redistribution. It actually was moving around. It, central blood is partially contaminated. So, do you consider the femoral blood to be central blood? No, the femoral blood is peripheral blood. Okay. Well, I would think that if the heart blood redistributed more than the femoral blood, that it would be lower. Counts is that wrong? Over. You may answer. And I'm very confused what you're even asking okay. me now. I want to know why the femoral blood is the lowest in concentration of any of the bloods up there. That's typical in most drug analysis that we perform. The That's femoral, femoral blood is always lower? Generally speaking, yes. And why is that? Because when somebody dies, your tissues release drug into the central cavity, artificially elevating the heart blood. Okay. I see where the, the lidocaine in the femoral blood is higher than it is in the heart blood. Is lidocaine not redistribu redistri redistribute like propofol? Redistribution can be also based on the drug itself, the volume of distribution, how well the drug distributes in and amongst the tissues. So it's really drug dependent. It doesn't necessarily have to follow the same order in which I just described. Okay. Why do you do an examination of the vitreous? The vitreous sample was analyzed for propofol, probably trying to get an understanding on this particular case because propofol is the real issue in this case. Why did you? What are you looking for? What's that analysis of the vitreous being less than 0 0.40 tell you? Well, one, it tells me we didn't have enough vitreous to actually do a full analysis. The quantity of fluid, which is typically no more than three milliliters um, of fluid from the eye. Um, we tried to analyze it at a dilution because we wanted to conserve it, and it was very low. It, what it's telling me is that propofol doesn't distribute very well to the eyeball fluid, to the water. When, it, when it's up there, it's, that little symbol in front of the 0 0.40 is a less than sign, right? That's correct. How much less than 0 0.40, or do you have any idea? Well, I have it in my notes. Yes, I do. What is it? Give me a second to find it, please. When we, when we quantitate any type of drug, we run what they call a calibration curve. We actually teach the instrument that a certain concentration 
gives me a certain height of, of a peak. So we run a series of concentrations to create a, a nice linear curve so that we can make comparisons to real case samples with it. Our lowest calibrator in this particular analysis for propofol is a 0 0.10. This vitreous sample, normally we would require two milliliters for as a sample size. We didn't have two milliliters to work with. Therefore, we diluted it in order to still run the assay. We diluted it one in four. In other words, I only could use a half a mil, half a milliliter, excuse me, instead of two. So it's a one-fourth dilution. It still was quantitating below my 0.10 lowest calibrator. The protocol says you cannot call it. They give it a real value. Paperwork-wise, I'm looking at my notes, which has already been provided to everybody. Um, quantitatively, it's quantitating out at 0 0.28 micrograms per milliliter times four, so you're roughly about 0.12 area if it's accurate. Again, the accuracy down below my lowest calibrator, I can't guarantee. So your, your less than 0 0.40 just means it's such a small quantity you can't really determine actually what it is. It's below my lowest calibrator and I can't assure the accuracy of the value. Therefore, a vague value of present less than is certainly better than no nothing in that particular slot at all. Now I notice you, you've done lidocaine in the heart blood, the hospital blood, the femoral blood. Why didn't you do it in the vitreous? Probably because we didn't have enough of it to do it. <clears throat> now, when it comes to the urine, the first urine up there is the urine where you got the 0.15. That's the urine taken at the time of autopsy. That's correct. And the urine from the scene, is, is that from that uh, plastic jug that was on the, on the chair? at the house were in the bedroom, bedroom number two? The urine from the scene was the urine that was brought to me in a plastic thousand milliliter jug that I transferred from Elisa Fleek. I have no idea where it was actually located. Okay, Pro approximately 450 cc's of it? Yes, sir. And that, when you analyzed it for propofol, was less than 0 0.10? Yes. Okay, now you have plenty of sample to calculate, to, to analyze, right? Correct. Why couldn't you get the exact figure? We used, a, we used a full sample size of it, but again, it was below our lowest calibrator. Which, How far below? On paper, it says 0 0.026. 0 0.026, so it's negligible. It's negligible, yes. Uh, the, the, bottom, the bottom drug that you analyzed up there, the ephedrine? Correct. When you analyzed it for it in the blood, there was none. Correct? Correct. But when you analyzed for it in the urine, you determined that it was present, correct? Yes. Is that because the bladder can store things for days? Yes. And so that ephedrine, uh, the fact that it's present in the bladder or in the, or in the urine, both at the scene and at autopsy, and the fact that it's not detectable in the heart blood, that would mean to you that that ephedrine could have been used a day ahead of time, two days ahead of time, something like that? It could, yes. How far ahead of time could it have been used? Well, ephedrine tends to stick around in your body a little while. Um, I don't have very specifics of the half-life of the drug itself. 
Um, but again, the urine is a reservoir of collecting multiple things from days ago. So, I mean, it could, it could be recent, well, it can't be recent use because there's not in the blood. Um, it could be easily 24, 48, 72 hours ago. Okay, well, the half-life really only applies to what's in the blood. It doesn't apply to what's in the bladder, does it? No. Now, the propofol that's in the urine at the scene that you describe as less than 0.10, could be a 0.02 or something in that range. That could also be from a couple of days ago, couldn't it? Sure, as well as it could be recent, too. Now, we've got significantly higher propofol in the lab and the uh, urine at the time of autopsy. Is that correct? Okay, yes. So that's consistent with, with uh, propofol going into the to Mr. Jackson's body at some point in time after the urine from the scene was deposited. Do you understand? Do you understand? No, I have no idea. Okay. I'll sustain. We ask, please. The urine at the scene that was collected out of that plastic, that was definitely created way before the urine that was accumulated from the autopsy. That can cause well, I don't. I'll rule. You don't, counsel don't have to argue. Okay. You may answer and explain if you'd like. Okay. Um, the urine collected at scene represents, I have no idea what. It could be, it was collected, I don't even know if it was collected from Mr. Jackson. I mean, that, that's an assumption made. I mean, the urine in a bottle brought to me was from the scene. Okay. It could be from anybody. Okay. The urine collected at time of autopsy being higher. Let's assume hypothetically that seen urine was deposited there at about seven to between seven and seven thirty AM. Okay. Time of death is somewhere between twelve and two twenty six. Okay. And the autopsy urine was collected after time of death, correct? Yes. And not much urine would be collected after the initial death, would it? After the initial time of death. Well, to correct you, actually, the, there was quite a bit of autopsy urine collected. Actually, two jars worth, which is quite a bit of urine for a decedent that I'm typically seeing. There was two jars of uh, urine collected at the autopsy? Yes, sir. How big are the jars? About 200 milliliters. And so there was about 400 milliliters of urine in the body at time of autopsy? If you give me a minute, I'd be able to tell you how much urine total we had as we preserved the urine indefinitely. So give me just a second, and I'll be able to tell you that information. Well, let me stand corrected. Actually, there were three jars of urine collected at autopsy. 189, 183, and about 155 milliliters. So, so add those things together and you get over 500. Over 500, I'll give you that. Okay, about, so about the same amount, or a little bit more than the amount from the scene urine in that, in that jar you had. Correct. And that 500 milliliters of urine was at a 0.15 micrograms per milliliter concentration yes. in propofol. Would that mean that you would expect that propofol to have been accumulated since, assuming it's the same individual, 